if you ask me what was the most beautiful game of round 4 first uh, first game as in first what do you say first part of round 4 so let's say 4.1 that would be vidit gujarati versus etian backroad an indian player versus a french player it was a beautiful attacking game straight out of the opening against a sicilian by vidit so this is going to be a treat to watch and analyze so vidit played e4 and backro played c5 the sicilian knight f3 e6 and we have d4 takes takes and we have knight c6 knight f knight c3 queen c7 and now knight b5 so it's sort of an open sicilian variation queen forces forced back but a6 will kick the knight right back later <clears throat> bishop d3 knight f6 and castles bishop e7 queen e2 castles king h1 so vidit is already preparing to play f4 f4 and e5 and gain space attack so he has uh, aggressive intentions here a6 finally by backrow knight takes knight and then the knight retreats now knight d7 so basically it's uh, preparing the f pawn push if needed and also uh, preparing knight c5 now f4 as expected from vidit and here bakro plays b5 the more appropriate move would be knight c5 to take the sting out of any potential attack of this bishop so b5 played and here with it just plays e5 gaining space opening up the bishop still knight c5 is uh, possible right if you go knight c5 though is there is there any sacrifice is possible so let's say knight c5 is the greek gift uh, option here bishop takes h7 probably not probably can't be enough queen h5 and rook f3 is too slow i believe yeah it's too slow so oh, it's actually playable f6 and rook h3 wow it's actually playable so maybe that is the reason why bakro didn't choose uh, knight c5 he played c5 is the same thing possible now bishop takes pawn Hmm. risky but it's definitely uh, one of the options here but as why do you need more so probably that wouldn't give enough advantage to vidit so vidit goes f5 this is where the game becomes really spicy so now he is offering a free pawn the queen or knight can take it bakro took it and now this is a critical moment of the game where vidit burned a lot of his clock he he has to decide to play f6 or not to play f6 and he went for it he went for f6 and uh, what is the point so let us understand the most uh, natural move here the nat most natural move would be bishop takes f6 right now with its idea is rook takes bishop and after pawn takes back oh uh, actually knight takes bishop pawn takes and then pawn takes now with it will play bishop to h6 threatening queen g4 and queen g7 mate so the only way to stop it is to play f5 now queen e3 threatening queen g5 now the only way is f6 now you got to take the rook so this line could happen where white is running no risk there is always a repetition so this is definitely a safety net for vidit even if things go out of hand he will still have a slightly uh, better position and probably a repetition so the crow in this position actually played pawn takes f6 which is a mistake and it's a mistake because vidit played the right move bishop f4 with it can also start with bishop takes h7 but he goes bishop f4 rook d8 so already preparing the run with the king and also getting out of bishop h6 but bishop h6 when he won't happen so <clears throat> if the queen and rook get in here making threat the king can run that's what bakro wants rook e1 threatening to win a pawn just activating all the pieces and now here bakro played rook d4 and now came bishop takes h7 the sack with it had very less time here he has 9 minutes imagine the nerves at this point like how how bad it will be one mistake and the beautiful game can become a forgetful memory and here he uh, he he lashes out with bishop takes pawn the point being after if king takes bishop then of course queen h5 check and if king goes back we can take yeah we can take here bishop and e5 and pawn can't take back because if pawn takes back rook can be upset threatening mate which is unstoppable 
So Bakro didn't take. He he had already prepared the king run. So the king runs, but now queen h5, threatening the same thing. Bishop takes e5. Remember, it's not. Uh, it's actually completely equal, as in material wise. But this is only down by one pawn. So he has an attack for free basically. So he's totally winning. Rook takes bishop. Bakro decided to give up the exchange because the pressure was too much. But now it's just completely up material. There's not much play for black. With it, just plays bishop e4, kills Bakro's counterplay. Now knight e4 and knight f6, and rook comes back. King comes to c7, queen h7, and here rook moves and another nice move. Knight comes back, knight h8. Wow, he had to defend the pawn. How else can you defend? You can't push right because g g6 hangs. So he just plays knight h8. It's a sorry position for Ethiopian Bakro. Rook takes e6, and after king moves, with it just came back, and. Uh, So the critical moments of the game were in the opening, where right here, if it played f5. From here, the next few moves were critical, and this was the most critical. Here, are there other lines to understand? Definitely. So, for example, uh, after takes bishop f4, if he had, what if he had played bishop f4 first? Then f6 wouldn't be possible. So he goes to f6. Now bishop f4, rook d8. Now rook e one, rook d four. Whether any any other options? Yeah, there was rook take bishop giving some material back, but it was already gone by that time. So the small decision we had to make here was, like here, do we exchange? Is bishop into h seven good here? King takes and now queen h four. This will be a totally different uh, game. Like king g eight and then bishop f four. Sort of transposes to the previous line, but the rook is not it on d d eight. It's all about timing. So with it played everything perfectly. So it's all working out for him. So a nice win for the India number four player, I believe, right now with it Gujarati, and now it's a must-win situation for Ethiopian Bakro in the second uh, part of the round in four point two.